Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Physical Network Security Control. Today we're going to be discussing the why of physical network security, and then we're going to move on to some physical network security practices. There's a fair amount of information to impart, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by discussing the why of physical network security. Your network security actually begins at the door. The boundaries of your building should be your first line of defense. If an attacker has physical access to the network resources, then there is a high probability that those network resources can be breached. The level of security that gets deployed should be driven by the amount of security that is needed. As the need for overall security increases, so should the level of physical security. There are dangers that are associated with unauthorized physical access. There is theft of those network resources, and they are expensive to replace. Unintentional damage can occur when there is unauthorized physical access. It only takes a simple spilled drink to destroy a server or a router or a switch or some other expensive component. It's also possible that if an attacker has physical access, they can reconfigure those network resources. This can result in a breached network. One type of reconfiguration that's possible are devices that have credential workarounds. Some networking equipment comes with known workarounds for when administrator credentials need to be recovered, as in when an administrator leaves an organization without disclosing his or her logon credentials, or when an administrator forgets those credentials. Cisco even publishes the steps of its workaround on its website, and those steps are available for anybody to review. If you're curious about those steps, you can check out that web link that I've posted here. This well-known vulnerability is an easy exploit for anybody that has physical access to Cisco equipment. With the why of physical network security out of the way, let's move on to physical network security practices. Basic physical security should include knowing who's in the building and who has access to equipment. You can do that through employee badges. Security check-in should be implemented for all visitors. All vulnerable network resources, as in servers and networking equipment, should be kept in a secure area. Then there's intermediate physical security. This is where access to all vulnerable network resources is controlled and logged. One way to implement this is to use RFID badges to gain access to network resources. Or you could implement cipher locks that people have to punch in a code in order to unlock the door. Another step in intermediate physical security is the separation of resources. Switches and routers are secured separately from servers with different access levels for the servers and the networking equipment. In environments where high security is needed, advanced physical security needs to be implemented. A zoned approach is an advanced physical security practice. It's a layering of security in which multiple barriers, or security tests, must be passed before physical access is granted. The methods of physical security that are used can be thought of as those security tests. You can use security guards requiring all authorized personnel to have some form of ID so that the security guards can identify if that person is in an area in which they're allowed. Then there are door locks. You could use simple key locks, the analog approach. A slightly more advanced method would be cipher locks with the deployment of different codes for different areas or different groups of people. This allows for the logging of who has unlocked a door. You might also implement RFID magnetic locks, which also allow for the logging of, of who has unlocked the lock. One of the most advanced types of door locks would be a biometric lock. They're locks that make the person gaining access prove who they are through either a fingerprint scan or a retinal scan 
or possibly even a voice print. Video monitoring can also be deployed as a form of physical security, allowing you to record who has had access to those resources. You need to remember to store the recordings separately from the resources being monitored, so if the resource gets stolen, they don't steal the recording as well. You may implement a separation of resources. Networking equipment is kept separate from servers, and the methods of access for the two resources are different. And finally, in highly secure environments, a man trap may be implemented. A man trap usually involves at least two doors. Access is granted through one door, but the next door cannot be opened until further verification has been achieved, and the person that's between the doors cannot go back out the other door. That means that ideally the person between the doors is trapped until some action or verification takes place. That concludes this session on physical network security control. We talked about the why of physical network security, and then we concluded with a brief discussion on physical network security practices. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.